This video is for MYP students who are preparing their Criterion D Summative Assessment Report and they want to get top marks. So in this particular video I'm going to focus on strand 2 and guide you through a few uh, steps and so when you're preparing your summative document you get a score of 8 out of 8 for strand 2. Now let's start with the assessment criteria. It says here that you evaluate the success of the solution against the design specifications and authentic product testing. So the key words is evaluate, design specification, and authentic product testing. Let's start with the last one, authentic product testing. Now this links back to strand one. So in strand one, you shared about how you're actually gonna do your testing. Now remember, for top marks in strand one, you need more than one test or more than one type of test. Um, so this here, so you've already shared that in strand one, so in strand two is basically sharing the results of that test. So I would begin with just sharing that raw data. Now the next thing, the raw data should also be directly linked to the design specifications. So again, back to strand one, your testing methods should be completely in sync with the design specifications. And then, so this, the data you're presenting is basically how each design specification uh, was scored. Uh, now, uh, once you've finished that, once you've got all your data, you then also need to evaluate it. So let me talk you through that in a little bit more detail. Uh, so first of all, is presenting the raw data. So you've, you've either interviewed somebody, or you've done some kind of an online survey, or you've done some of measurements. Initially, just share all of that data, all that raw data. Now there's two types of data, there's two types of kind of uh, data that you should have collected. One is qualitative, and the other one is quantitative. Now quantitative is basically lots of data. So this is quite often in the form of some measurements. So maybe time trials. So maybe you've been testing something and you've got lots of data from time trials or certain measurements. Uh, so that's a quantitative data. The other way you probably, you could have uh, collected this data is through a survey. So maybe you've sent a survey to your target audience and it's been sent to 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 people. And, and this, this, the kind of data you're collecting is basically scores and rating systems. Um, so if you've got your design specification and you've got somebody to rate it out of five or rate it, rate it out of 10, this is lots of raw data, lots of numbers that we can actually collect. Uh, so just share all of that. Next thing is the qualitative data. And that usually is in the form of talking to your uh, client. So it could actually be an interview with your client talking about the product you, you made and if it's it, it, it worked, it, the product met the design brief and also did it solve their initial problem, but also talking through with your client about whether the product you created uh, indeed did match all of the design specifications. Now the raw data you collect here should be, it could be in the form of a video just like this, maybe you video the interview. The other raw data you could do is maybe a voice recording. Or if, or maybe some kind of like a, 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 if you're doing a video conference with your client, you can record that as well. Another way you could do it, if you're short on time, you could, um, and, or availability of your client is is, uh, is is difficult. You could send your client an email with a bunch of questions, and ask them to respond and reply to each of your questions. So that's another way you could possibly collect that kind of the data. So whatever you've collected, whatever kind of scoring system or testing you've done, just share that data to start with. Next step is, I wanna work out how you can actually present the data, because just a bunch of numbers um, doesn't have much meaning, but if you could present them nicely uh, with bar graphs and charts and things like this, it'll add a lot of meaning. And then the last step is analyzing the data. Now, the easiest way to do that is just look at the things that you scored really well in, you did really well, and the ones that you scored poorly in. Don't worry about that middle ground. So if you highlight some of the uh, unusual peculiarities of your, the data you've collected, so maybe there's something that you scored really badly and you highlight that in your evaluation, you say, in the, with, the, with regard to this design specification, I scored, my product scored really poorly. And then you go into details about why you think it did actually score poorly. So this is you evaluating or analyzing the data. Then find some uh, areas where you scored well. I scored five out of five, for this design specification after I surveyed 100 people. The reason I scored so well is because blah, 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 blah. And again, this is you evaluating. Now, one word here I've thrown into uh, the mix here is critically evaluating. If 
for good analysis actually talks about some positives and it talks about some negatives or things you could improve as well. So your analysis or your evaluation of the data is balanced. Uh, next thing here, explain the accuracy. So perhaps when you sent your survey out, one of the questions uh, produced some weird data. Maybe it's because the question you wrote didn't make much sense. So you can talk about any kind of uh, uh, problems that you may have encountered. So you're explaining some of the anomalies, but you can also talk about some of the accuracy of the testing. So this again is evaluating, evaluating not only the product, but also your, your uh, data collection uh, methods as well. Um, you've talked about the design specifications. Okay, let me give you some examples. So first of all, I said sharing the raw data. So this section here, this is a transcript of uh, an interview that was conducted with one person and their client. You don't need to read the words, but this is raw data. Here's the transcript of my interview with my client. Here's another example of raw data, and it's just the numbers and, and then the words and stuff like that. Uh, here's some more raw data. So this is step one, just share the raw data. Whatever you've collected, just share it. Step two, present the data. Now, if you've done like something nice, uh, a nice like online survey, one of, the, one of the features of the online survey or something like Google Forms is that you can, with a click of the button, you can produce nice bar graphs and pie charts and things like that. So that's the second step. How can you present this data so it actually has a lot more meaning and it communicates clearly to the reader? So here are some examples of ways to present the data. Now, I just wanna hone in on that point. So first of all, you've gathered, so this image here illustrates you gathering the data. So that's the raw data. And sometimes it's quite messy and it doesn't make sense. Once you've sorted that data and then arranged that data, then you, the, the next step is to present that visually appealing and in some kind of a visually appealing way that communicates a certain message to the reader of your summative document. So that's a nice little infographic illustrating the progression. Data analysis, data. Now we move on to the third stage. The third stage is once you've presented your data, you then analyze the data. Um, here's another little chart here. Um, so the first one here talks about the data, moving on to the information. And once you're starting, because you've collected all the data, you're starting to get, get, gain some information, you're gain, gaining some insights. And you can, the next stage is you can start to actually build some knowledge. And then the final step is you have some wisdom. Now this last image here, I borrowed this um, from uh, DP, and it's an acronym DIKW. It starts with data. You collect the raw data, and then from that data, you organize it, and you can get some information from that data. And the next bit is you can then move, progress on to, from the information, you can start to build some knowledge. And then that last stage is actually from that knowledge, you can then have some wisdom. So this is the big picture. This is kind of what the students do in the diploma program. Um, so the neat progression. Now, let me conclude with differentiation and assessment. So for you to get top marks, you need to critically evaluate. If you just explain the success, you're gonna get top marks of six. If you just outline the success, you're gonna to get top marks of four, but if you just state the success, you're only gonna get a score of two. So that's the, that's the aim, the, working the other way around. So first of all, state the success, then see if you're gonna outline the success of the solution, then explain the success of the solution, and then the, the, to get top marks is you critically evaluating uh, the success of your solution linked to the design specification based on your authentic testing methods. So I hope that helps. Good luck with Criterion D, strain two.